All right, broke up the hole, broke up the old shot, broke up the hole, broke up the old shot, broke up the hole, broke up the hole, bosh and yellow shot, bosh and goggle dash. The blamas of the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, true well. Salutations to the whole full elect out there, you Akim to Zadakim, that do this thing in the utmost truth and sincerity. I'm the priest Shaman. This week's topic is going to be entitled I Get Good, I Thank the Lord. I get evil, I thank the Lord. This lesson is going to be dealing with the volatility, the volatile nature in which in which the Most High treats us. Meaning, he's going to give us ups and we're going to be winners and he's going to throw a couple L's at us. And the fact that we have done so many shows in this manner, on this topic, shows how the Most High gives us the goods and he gives us the bad. The, church, the churches don't like to deal with the bittersweet nature of the Heavenly Father's judgment and mercy because there ain't no money in that. But we're here to tell you the truth. So without further ado, I'm going to jump on them scriptures. Job 2 and 9. Then said his wife unto him, Does thou still retain thine integrity? Right. Because Job was catching hell. And Satan made a wager with the Mosai that, you know, if I put hell on him, he's going to curse you and not keep his integrity. All this was a theatrical thing done by the Heavenly Father for our learning. The Mosai knew exactly how it was going to play out. The Mosai controlled Satan to say what he said. The Mosai controlled Job to do what he'd do. All these things are for our learning. As you can see, his wife, the woman, being feminine, which means a lack of faith, first sign of danger, she doesn't lean on to the Lord. And that's women by nature, man. They're not, they're not built with that faith, man, that a man has. You know, you, a woman gets sick, she has all different types of pills and for the most part, they got different type of mil, pills and medications because they don't trust it the most high. You know what I mean? Medications for the lightest thing, headache, medication. You know, I'm sleepy, medication. I'm not sleepy, medication. So that's, that's the nature of a woman. It says, curse the most high and die. Um, this shouldn't come as no surprise, but it, it kind of threw Job off a little bit because he says, but he said unto her, thou speakest as soon as the foolish woman speaketh. What shall we receive? Good <laughs> at the hand of the most high and shall not we receive evil? Right, it's not the most high balance. Our people have been catching hell under these nations for a few millennia. But guess what? That's going to be turned around soon. We just patiently enduring it. And in patiently enduring it, you're going to take some L's and you're going to take some dubs. So, I'm not going to even front. I called me an L last night, which a lot of times when I catch L's, that's what kind of motivates me to do these lessons. More often than not, I'm going to be honest with you. Always being honest with you. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speakest. What, shall we receive good at the hand of the most high? Shall not we receive evil? In all did this not Job, in all this did not Job sin with his lips, right? So Job ain't gonna talk shit and, oh, fuck you, Lord, and, man, fuck this thing. And like a lot of individuals do, they just say, fuck it, give up, fold, lose patience. So, to those guys, I say the demons did a good job because they're weeded out the unworthy, you know? Hey, them demons are doing a good job, man, getting those uh, unworthy individuals out of there, man. So, and furthermore, they're doing a good job in proving if you're worthy of this truth or not. So when they try me, I don't get upset. I just revert back to the Lord to keep me mentally stable, spiritually balanced, and always thankful, man. Like my apostles and elders do. And go to the next scripture. This is the book of Job, chapter one. We're gonna be in Job because Job is that he's that example, man. He's like the greatest example of this. This is Job 1 and 19. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they were dead. 
and I only am I escaped alone to tell. So, in Job's situation, shit was just getting from bad to worse. And it feel like that sometimes. It feel like the hell is never going to end. And sometimes it feel like the blessings are never going to end. How the most I be, you know, doing us good. A lot of people have been catching hell this year in 2020. But when I speak with brothers, overall, it's been like our best year spiritually, mentally, and different aspects, man. Shit, you know. So that's the Lord looking out. And sometimes when the world is doing good, brothers is catching all types of hell. So you never know, man. You just got to have faith and endure whatever tribulation is going. So Job lost his son. He lost, man, everything, man. He lost his kids. Eventually, he'll get them back. Um, many foes got them back in a reincarnation. It says, then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground in worship. So renting his mantle. Um, falling to the ground, shaving your head. These are things that you use to humble yourself, make yourself of the earth, you know? Because this was a very rich and prosperous Israelite right here, man. Just like that, overnight, shit went south, you know? Shit went south. And, you know, you have to have a mental fortitude with this thing, man. You got to prepare your mind. You know, all these things happening. All this uncertainty with the elections, shit going crazy all over the world. You see, they're about to take off the president of France's head over there, man. <laughs> you know? So I pray we all do that when things get extremely worse, extremely bad, and we kind of, you know, getting a, a, a blunt of that fire as well, that we just endure it, man. And be excited about it because we know it's that much closer. It says, then Job, yeah, um, verse 21, Job 1 and, 20, and 1 and 21, and said, naked came I out of the, my mother's womb. Right, so you ain't come in this world with nothing physical. You only came in this world with something spiritual, which is this truth. If you had this truth, you always had this truth, man. Scripture says it works through follow So we ain't came in nothing materialistically in this world. So fuck the materials. Right? We just don't want to lose the spiritual. It says, Naked came I out my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. Right? Gonna go right back in the earth with nothing material, just like how you came in with nothing material. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So hold on now. Hold on. Joe said, blessed be the name of Yahweh by Shimei Shah. Hey man, throughout the Lord. You know? Always. No matter what. That's Joe's spirit, and that's the spirit we in. That's the spirit we got. You know? Becoming numb to all the BS that happens sometimes. You know, I could list off a bevy of things, man. Brother's always going through some type of uphill battle. And whatever you got on lock. The spirits are going to find a different way to come at you. Like boxing, you know, they're going to... They're kind of trying to size you up and look at different angles they could get in. And they're going to get their shots off, man. Hey, you're going to get knocked down too. Just don't get knocked out, right? It says, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. You know? Now, let's go to Lamentations, the third chapter, the 38th verse. Jeremiah speaking it says out of the mouth of the most high proceedeth not evil and good rhetorical question of course out of the mouth of the most high proceedeth good and evil man you're not above that none of us are and yo you catch hell whether you're doing the right things or the bad things I mean yeah the most high jack you up when you go off but he could also jack you up when you're on point Right? So, that's just balance, man. Love it that way. It gotta be that way. Keeps us on our toes. It says, wherefore doth a living man complain? Right, so what you bitching about? Man up. Which, I mean, like, seriously, what do you expect? 
smooth sailing like the people in the world? Hell no. Sirach, uh, second chapter, tells us when we come to face the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation, man. It says, Wherefore doth the living man complain, a man for the punishment of his sins? Right? And we all sin. That's how the most I has license at any point to kill any of us. Right? You break one law, you break them all. The wages of sin is death. The only difference between us and the two thirds is we, when we repent and we come back sorrowful to the Lord, it's in sincerity, man. You know, humility. You dish out humility, you receive mercy. You dish out pride, you get destruction, man. It says, let us search and cry our way and turn again to the Lord. Right, so that's what you do. When the Most High is dishing you out, you know, that righteous chastening, just still pray. Hey, Lord, so lock if any bullshit I've done or doing, gonna do, you know, just continue to work with me. I know I ain't worthy. Please just continue to build me up, have mercy upon my soul, upon my spirit, upon the brother's spirit, you know. Get delivered out of here, man. Oh yeah, John, the 18th chapter, the 10th verse, says, Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant. So this is when they came to snatch up our Lord, right? You know, Peter whipped out a weapon. You know, he was a man of action <laughs> and very zealous. He's trying to defend the Lord. So look. He said he smote the high priest servant and cut off his right ear. The servant name was Malchus, which the most high healed that Israelite Malchus, because he was of the elect. Alright? One of the brothers that have showed about how the most high uh, son Yahweh Shah, when he was healing, he was healing those with faith. Those that believe. So this individual that got his ear healed, he believed on the Lord, man. Israelite. It says, then said Yahweh Shah unto Peter. Put thy sword into thy sheath. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? Right. So that's our Lord attitude with this thing, man. All right. You got to drink the cup of tribulation. The cup of affliction. All right. Just got to drink it. Deal with it. Drink it like how you drink the honey. <laughs> Everybody want to drink the sweet part, but they don't want to deal with the bitter herbs. You know? Nah, man. Yeah, I wish I said, my cup is sufficient for me, man. Gotta, you know, deal with that. Certain brothers' health ailments, they dealing with their things, man. Financial woes, they dealing with it. Fucked up in the spirit, they dealing with it. So on and so forth. Okay. This is how the, this is what the Apostle Paul said about you know the topic at hand. Romans 12 and 12. Rejoicing in the hope. Hope is the evidence of things not seen. Right? So we rejoice in the things that are promised to us by our Lord. Look at this bullshit. <laughs> Black Lives Matter. Yeah. Right, anyways. He said, we're rejoicing in the hope, right? Right, the evidence of things not seen, the deliverance, America being burnt to smithereens, having these nations under our feet, you know? We're rejoicing in those things. We can't see them, but we're hoping in them because we believe in these scriptures. The Most High gave us that faith, Ephesians 2 and 8. It says, patient in tribulation. Whoa. Patient means to suffer. So we suffer in the tribulations, but we deal with it. Hey, uh, the brothers in Texas had a camp, man up Jacob, right? Just got to man up. It says, continue in instant in prayer. So, book of Thessalonians tells us, pray without ceasing. That's how you combat these demons, man. All right? These impure thoughts of weakness and feebleness. You got to build yourself up with prayer. You can't do this thing on your own. 
I need Yahweh Shah to guide us, man. To help us. He's a rock. Right? Mediator to the Most High. Gotta fall upon him. Cry upon his name. To make intercession for us. So that's how the Apostle Paul dealt with it. And we kind of get an idea how all the men of the Lord deal with these things, man. They understand that we get good and evil and they pray to the Most High. And giving thanks to the Most High regardless. Where we at? This is our Hebrews 12 and 9, the Apostle Paul again. Furthermore, you have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us. Yeah, we have, you know, fathers that took a ride, of, ride and dealt with us as kids, you know, in righteousness. That here is frowned upon in America. That's how come these kids are disobedient and rebellious. And the few people that have it in their spirit to discipline their child, the people from the islands and, you know, the people that grew up with these things, they could take your damn kids away, man. So that's, that's, that, that's the bullshit with this place. It says, furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not, which is that righteous fear, shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live right? So if we, you know, your, your parents, they chasten you. You say, man, I'm damn, I'm, I'm hey, dad, I'm, I'm glad how you raised me, how you raised me, man. At a time, I ain't like it because I was a kid and I was a child and I thought like a child. But now that I'm a man, I think like a man. I respect all those ass you gave me and stayed me on the right path. That's the actual pops. How much more the Heavenly Father when he's doing it to you, man? Right? It says, for they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, right? Those few days represent years, you know, however long your parents have been chastising you from a youth to a adulthood or adolescence, right? Their own pleasure, but he for our profit, right? So sometimes your parents beat your ass because, you know, they have certain philosophies and ideals that they think how you should be raised but sometimes it's not even for your profit you know but every time the most side does it to us guess what it's for our profit you know it's for our benefit it says oh I lost it That, why, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Right, so the Most High ain't doing this for no reason, man. Most High is doing this for our profit because he loves us, bro. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. <laughs> Where, I mean, after a while, it always kind of, it feels a little grievous, but, you know, it's like whatever. It's whatever. You kind of build up, like how you build up tolerance to anything. You build up tolerance, but, you know, hey, a lot of times that chastening could be grievous. It says, nevertheless, afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness. You know, it makes you more tolerable with the chastening. Makes you thank the most high more gives you you know it's good man it's good just like putting a, a ointment on a wound sometimes it's painful but that ointment was necessary it makes the wound better like thankful that you did it so it says nevertheless afterward it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby right try it out <sighs> They could speak on these things. They could tell you, give you advice on these things. And they dealt with these things. Again, got to salute the apostles and the elders, man. Because a lot of shit that they tell us from dealing with individual people, the world, women, uh, leadership, all these types of things. They've been through the sweet and the bitters of it. And 
we go through those things ourselves at times and it's for our learning so ultimately it's just to yield a better fruit man a better individual a better a better prophet of the most high wherefore lift up the hands which hang down yeah you get fucked up in the spirit sometimes you don't want to talk to nobody getting all emotional and shit again sometimes not all the times you know you get depressed Depression is normal, man. You shouldn't be taking no goddamn pills with depression. So-called white man madness. It's a natural thing to feel sad, man. You're gonna be happy-go-lucky all the time. You ain't gonna be Mr. Serious Soldier all the time. You're just gonna feel fucked up in the spirit sometimes, man. It says, so you just told Apostle Paul saying, Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight your path for your feet. These are some encouraging words, man. These are some like hype, like spiritual, like pre-game hype up words, man. About to defeat your enemy. Get on a spiritual tip, man. It says, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Right. Let it rather be healed, man. So a precious ointment of healing when we go through what we go through we deal with it get better get stronger keep it pushing feel me I'm gonna close out right here James 5 and 10 it says take my brethren the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering affliction and of patience so ain't nothing new under the sun man Yo, Job predates a lot of prophets, man. We already did the chronicle, uh, chronological order of the prophets lesson. You can check it out on GMS at a point. This is, you know, Sodomos has always dealt with the men that he deems worthy. So that's what the Apostle James is saying, man. Seems like the story never changed. The same thing they're writing about. We're doing lessons on to this day. So the most I didn't change. Malachi 3 and 6. He's always going to be trying his man. It says, Behold, we count them happy which endure. Right. We count them happy which endure. That's sad. Not losers like the fucking world will say. Oh, you're not good. Look at Jim. Look at them bums. Nigga, fuck you. <laughs> we, we joyous, man. We're doing this work. It says, Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job. And guess what? That's who started the lesson with Job, man. An example throughout all the ages of what dealing with affliction is, dealing with affliction and enduring it, and the rewards that come with enduring it, you know? And I've seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. So ultimately, Job, which Israel represents Job, got the tender mercies of the Lord, man. Because guess what? At the end of the day, as much as we get on the two-thirds and getting our people for their wickedness, rightfully so, even them, all Israel, as it says in the book of Romans 11, chapter, is going to receive the mercy of the Lord and be right in the kingdom of heaven. You know, Jeremiah, I believe 30 and 30. Uh, no, I have to go back and check. But the same, the, the same thing that the apostle Paul was writing about in Romans 11, he was just quoting Jeremiah concerning the new covenant. So, hey, look, with that, brothers, I'm going to sign out. I'm going to give all praises as always, good or evil, <laughs> always, to the Most High, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai, Bashim, Rakak, And I'm going to say double honest to the apostles and the elders of Great Melstone, which well. And salutations to the whole for the elect out there. You Akim to Zadakim that do this thing in the utmost truth and sincerity. Shalom.